Hey everybody, Airy in the air here. We're out high lining. So today, I'm gonna teach you what high lining is. Maybe you've seen these videos on my channel. Maybe you've seen paraglide videos. Maybe you've seen some of my high line videos. But we're out here high lining today. So today I'm gonna teach you what high lining is. And it's such a beautiful day. So first, you gotta you gotta appreciate the spring springing here in Central Oregon. Beautiful wildflowers are popping. So check it out. We're gonna talk about what highlighting is. Here we go. And spring has sprung in Central Oregon. It is so beautiful out today. First time it's gonna be 70 all year. And I'm out here with some of my best friends, and we're gonna make a really nice high line today. Looks like a cilantro. <laughs> it does look like cilantro. Okay, so high lining. High lining is a type of slack lining where we rig our slack lines high up off of the ground between cliffs, um, between mountain peaks, and we then walk across it, balancing carefully, and we also do bounce tricks. And for me, I started slack lining in let's see, 2006 when I was in high school and I saw a guy do a backflip off of a slack line into water and I said to myself, oh, I'm definitely gonna slack line because it's another substrate for me to do a backflip. And so I bought a slack line the next day and then the first time I ever rigged it, I broke it because I let it rub on the rock and it snapped. And so I learned very quickly that these things aren't invincible so you gotta rig it really carefully. So almost a decade later when I got into highlining, I already knew that you had to rig it really carefully. So here in highlining, the rigging is really important. It has to be really strong because you're going to put your life on it. And that's why when you see the highline, you're going to see that there's another piece of webbing hanging below it in loops, and that's our backup line. That's so that if the main line breaks, that you don't just fall to your death and splat on the rocks below. We also use a leash and a climbing harness to tie ourselves to the line so that when you fall off, you don't die. And there is a kind of very small sect of highlining called free solo where you walk without the harness. I've done it a couple times. A number of my friends are the world record holders in it and it's not super recommended, but it is uh, pretty exciting. So. Um, I have been lucky enough to slackline and highline all over the world in Morocco and in China and in Italy and in Canada and in Mexico and I've been lucky enough to establish lines all over the place. I'm currently the United States national record highline holder which is uh, 880 meters long. That was in Moab. There's a cool video on this channel of that adventure. And hopefully in July, 
in Montreal, Canada. I'll become a world record holder on a two kilometer long high line. Very exciting. Um, but yeah, it's a really amazing sport and it's really good for your mind and it's really good for your body. And when you go out on the high line, it's like your body wants to be afraid because your monkey brain tells you don't do that. You could die, you're really high off the ground. And as you fight that repetitively over and over, you fight that feeling of fear, you just kind of get to like kind of face that. And once you get real good at it, it's not as scary. The fear still comes in, but what you end up doing is almost like a form of meditation where you are able to just witness your emotions and you witness the thoughts that come into your head. And instead of when you when you think, oh, is my leash actually tied? Am I tied in? Instead of being really afraid of that, you actually just see, oh, the thought of my leash just came into my head. So then you're not so controlled by your fear. You can see your thoughts and you can see your emotions and they don't just control you, they don't knock you off the line. It's also a lot of, uh, um, and for me, a big part of my Highline progression has been the witnessing of my body because I've been slacklining for long enough now that my body just does it. Like I don't have to think about, oh, left hand down, right knee out, right foot step. I don't think about that. My body just walks across the high line and I just get to watch it. And so sometimes I just focus on my breath. Other times I just let my mind wander. Um, but I try not to focus on getting to the other side. I try not to focus on whether I'm so good at high lining or not. I try not to focus on whether or not I'm going to fall. I try to just do one step at a time and be patient and be right where I am on the line and not rush and um, soon enough you'll be to the other side, right? So it's taught me a lot of things about life and it's been one of the best teachers that I've ever had. I recorded a great podcast and I've also given some public speeches titled Life Lessons from a High Line. That's a sweet podcast. I'll post the link in the description below. You should check it out. And yeah, high lining. So let's go over to the high line. I'll show you some of the rigging and then I'm going to get on there and walk it. All right, here we go. Okay, so check it out. This is our anchor here. We've got, as you can see, let me get a little better exposure here. As you can see, we've got a piece of static rope here wrapped around the tree three times. We're pulling on it twice. That knot you see is a fisherman's knot. I tied it myself. This is the tail of the webbing that's being backed up to a Dyneema sling that's on the other branch. We have a big industrial rigging shackle here. This is called a span set, which is polyester fibers inside of a Kevlar sheath that comes over to here where we have it girth hitched to the next span set, which is even stronger. And this runs along the rocks here. It comes all the way out and we've got it padded here. Here you can see some highliners. What's up, dude? They're touching each other. We, we, us highliners like to touch each other. They're not even dating, they're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now check it out. I'm sitting here on the edge of the cliff without a harness on, which is super smart and how I roll, typically, which makes me cringe at night when I'm in bed. Okay, so here's the end of the span set, and we've got these big shackles, which are really super strong. And this is called a web lock. And the web lock holds the webbing in place and doesn't let it slip out and also allows us to tension it. So we have two because, like I said, there's a backup line on it, which is goes out there in loops to keep you from dying if the first one breaks. And it also, as you walk, it makes it a lot easier because the backup webbing tends to absorb some of the 
horizontal oscillations that you put into the line with your body as you try to balance on it. So it makes it a lot easier to walk, a lot more pleasant. Um, let's see what else we got. So yeah, we pad the edge here because obviously the line can move and as it touches the side, we don't want it to abrade and break. So we pad it. This line is 190 meters long, something 650 feet. And it's probably a solid 250 to 300 feet off of the ground. It's really nice and sheer. So that means that even right at the beginning, if you fall off, you won't hit the rocks and you, as you swing into your leash. And to pull it tight, we use these cool toys. These are the pulleys. You see those? Yeah, this is a pulley system. Soon we'll use that. But to grab onto the webbing, we use this thing called a line grip. And the line grip is this thing. This is the line grip here. And this plate goes on at like, sorry, I don't know how to do this without my hands. This plate goes on it like this, and the webbing goes in between it, and then we pull on it and it pinches the webbing, and we're able to pull in on the webbing to make it tight. How tight the line needs to be is a, a matter of preference, but there is a, uh, a tension that's easier for walking, there's a tension that's easier for bouncing. Some people like it a little looser, some people like it a little tighter. But realistically, with Eric on the line, there is probably only a um, thousand pounds of tension or less on the line, which doesn't seem like a lot. The stuff that we're using, the webbing can lift probably close to 8,000 pounds, so it's plenty strong. So yeah, Eric's gonna come back and I'm gonna go out on there. All right, here we go. Tied the hat on. Woo. Yeah. Okay, gotta give her a shot here.
All right, that was awesome. Thanks for filming, Eric. So, the three most common questions that I get about highlining. Number one, how'd you get the line across? The answer to that is, well, every line is different, but on this one, we just walk a piece of paracord around and then we pull the webbing across. Second most popular question is, are you tied in? We've gone over that, yes, I'm tied in. And the third most popular question is, have you seen Man on Wire? Ha, yeah, I have, Philippe Petit is awesome. So if you got any other questions, put them in the comments below, subscribe to this channel, and check out the other Highline videos I've got here, and we'll see you on the next episode. Woo!